On this episode of Doing the Most, we're making a Fruity Pebbles Milkshake IPA. Homemade brews and various IPs, everything from meat to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. It gets a little lonely during isolation. It gets a little boring. The creative juices start to flow and you really, really want to act on that cabin fever and just brew something. And so we did. We took a quick trip down to Brew Shop OKC and loaded up on a few necessities that we needed anyway. And instead of waiting for weeks long Amazon deliveries, we decided to support local. So the folks at Brew Shop OKC were so kind to just take our order over the phone, charge our credit card by phone, and pop our order in the hatch of the Prius for us, including a 20 pound tank of CO2, since I needed a CO2 tank refill for my kegging setup. As part of that order, we got some Maris Otter LME and a few other things that we needed just for regular brewing practices and decided that we would brew some kind of IPA with all the other things that we had on hand. I've always got a ton of hops in the freezer, had a box of Fruity Pebbles still sealed in the in the cabinet, hadn't, hadn't touched that yet. And I had another can of LME that had been kicking around for a while that came from some beer brewing kit at some point. And so I figured I'd just combine all these together and see if I could make some kind of creamy IPA that could be enjoyed quick and easy while quarantine is still in effect. The ingredients for our Fruity Pebbles Milkshake IPA are one box of Fruity Pebbles, three and a third pounds can of liquid malt extract, three and a third pounds can of Maris Otter liquid malt extract, one and a half ounces of Centennial hops, one ounce of Citra hops, one pound of lactose, and for fun, a package of pea blossoms. I'm a big fan of brewing in the kitchen when and if I can, and a lot of times that means cutting corners in an effort to make a still delicious beer. Don't brew a lot of beer, typically trend toward wines and meads, but I figured I've got some beer ingredients on hand, might as well put those to use. So in the cast iron Dutch oven goes a gallon of water, and here's this big beautiful bag of fruity pebbles. Fruity pebbles are going to go into a brew bag, and then those are going to mash. And of course I needed to do a quality assurance taste test just to make sure everything was right with these uh, specialty grains. These are going to mash at 154 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour, and I'm popping those in a brew bag so it's just easy to strain them back out when it's time to make up our boil. I tend to use brew bags for quite a few things around the house lately, including cheese making. Once the water hits around 165-ish, it's time to drop our specialty grains in. We're just gonna swirl those around, make sure they're nice and covered with that hot water. And then I'm gonna pop those in the oven on my warming setting, which is set for 140 degrees, and just let those sit in that Dutch oven for an hour. And I'm using a little bit of washed yeast here. This is Kvyk Voss. And I just pop that in with a little bit of Go Firm Protect to rehydrate and let that sit out near the hot burner so it could come up to a nice warm temperature. And once our mash is over, it's time to strain that off so we can start creating our wort. So we're just gonna lift that brew bag up. It's been tied with a circular knot so I can slip a mash paddle in there and hang it above our pot. And then I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time very slowly drizzling another gallon of water through that bag to make sure our grains are nice and cleaned off, make sure all those fermentable sugars are washed off and probably no enzymes <laughs> in here. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, you wanna sparge as best you can and then add the rest of that uh, liquid from the mash into the brew kettle. Like I said, we're using a just like a run of the mill LME as well as a Maris Otter LME. I'm using the Maris Otter because I wanted something just a little bit more unique in there to give this uh, a little bit more character. But you could probably just use another can of off the shelf LME too. So as you're pouring that in, you wanna stir really well to make sure that it dissolves evenly into the liquid in that brew kettle because you don't want any to sink to the bottom and burn on the bottom of your brew kettle. 
just make sure you get every last drop out of both of those cans. You don't want to waste anything and scrape them out, you know, as best you can. Stir, stir, stir. And I'm popping in a hops basket here so I can strain out all of my hops at the end of the boil. The hops just go inside there and then it strains them out pretty easily when you are done boiling. Get a good whiff of that. And we're gonna start our boil now that it has come up to rolling with one ounce of Centennial hops. And these hops will be for bittering our beer. A half an hour later in our hour boil, we are adding another half an ounce of Centennial hops for just a little pinch of aroma. And with 15 minutes to go in our boil, we'll add our hefty pound of lactose as well as our one full ounce of Citra hops. I love citra hops and i was recently at a brewery in lee's summit missouri that has an ipa made purely with citra hops and it was to die for highly recommend you're really trying to catch a, a waft of aroma off of those hops and fruity pebbles then lastly i'm adding some pea blossoms and i mostly added these because they've been kicking around the freezer for about a year and it was time to just get rid of them r slash mead on reddit really went hype for pea blossoms for a while and i really bought more than i should because <laughs> the effect is interesting but not so interesting as to make it habitual then five minutes later our boil is completed we have boiled this for one hour with all those different additions and we're just straining out the pea blossoms and the hops particles and all of that with our hops basket and adding two gallons of icy 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 cold water that just came out of the deep freeze after being in there for a while and this is just to really plummet this thing back down to room temperature as best we can. You can see it is still a little warm. There's some steam wafting off there as I pour it into my brew bucket. Then I let that cool for a hot minute. It was about 90 degrees, which is a great temperature to pitch Kvass. And then we're gonna cover that up and just let it go. Easy as that. Less than a day later, we pop that lid off and looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that, pretty pleased. And just a little bit over a week later, we have fermented through to completion. Now our starting gravity on this was at 1.052. Our final gravity was more at about 1.015. And so there was a significant amount of body left over, even though the flavor of the beer was dry-ish. That body can likely be attributed to proteins from the Fruity Pebbles, which definitely took a while to clear, as well as the significant amount of lactose that was added to it. But there was no real perceptible sweetness when I tasted this. And it's got a really interesting color, kind of a murky-ish brown, and it's going to take some time to clear. There was definitely haze in there, and I'm pretty sure it was haze caused by whatever the hell is in fruity pebbles it had a weird flavor to it definitely some fermentation flavor still in there but we'll see i decided to try and clear this up with sparkaloid my tried and true my trusty and we'll give it a week or two and see how it does took a little longer than expected about three weeks but it dropped relatively clear. So I was more than happy to get that in a keg and under gas. Our keg has been sanitized and purged with CO2. So now it is time to rack into there from our secondary. And then we'll purge the headspace with a little bit of CO2, burp the keg, and then put it under 20 PSI for 48 hours. And after that 48 hours, we will burp the keg again and then switch it over to serving pressure, which for this is about five to seven PSI and we'll be ready to serve. I decided to invite David over for a little backyard social distance tasting. So you see how green this line is? Mm -hmm. It looks like pond scum. So what I want you to watch is I'm gonna pour it. Okay. And I want you to watch it through the, through the light, turn okay. from green to red. All right. Okay, so yeah. here we go. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's like a, that's an interesting marketing tool <laughs> right there. It 
it's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. The, um, the fruity pebbles is there. It's there. It's but it doesn't it doesn't itch in the face. That's very interesting. It's good. I like it a lot. You could hop it up, but I think I mean you can taste the hops in this. This is a nice middle of the road, like it's not a hot bomb. And no. I think if you made if you put a lot more hops in here, you might not be able to taste the fruity pebbles. Yeah. It is it's got a little bit of that heaviness from the lactose that's in there, but it's not like this I would this is refreshing. I think you could pull the lactose back by a quarter though. Yeah. It's not gonna hurt it. It's not bad though. No, it's for not a, bad. For a beer made with fruity pebbles as the specialty grain. <laughs> win that's all that's all i really have to say. Yeah, that's it's, not really, it's, it's delicious beer yeah it's good try your own uh try your own mashup with some uh some weird cereals that's let true us know. let us know in the comments what cereals that you should you want to brew with but give us ideas for us yeah well until next time you can uh follow us on instagram pinterest at doing the most okay our website's doing the most.org and thank you for watching